Hi coders, let's do some CSS experimentation this week. We will take a look at SVG filters, specifically turbulence and displacement map, which apply pearly noise effect to any HTML element. It can also be applied to HTML canvas element, so you can try and combine it with any of the effects we built in previous episodes. There is a patented cartoon animation technique called Squiggle Vision, and we will recreate it with CSS. It was used for shows like Dr. Katz, and it is a computer animation style that is supposed to remind viewer of hand-drawn animation sketches. It is characteristic by shaking squiggly lines even when the characters are standing still. I'm a huge fan of hand-drawn animation. For example, the game Cuphead was completely hand-drawn and styled as Disney cartoon from 1930s. You can see the lines shake a bit because they drew each frame by hand. Cuphead is such an inspiration for indie game developers as well, by the way. Squiggle Vision cartoon technique is much faster to produce than hand-drawn animation because it's done using computer. The shaken lines are achieved by looping five slightly different images over and over. That might give you an idea how to recreate this effect with CSS. It works both on text, images or any HTML element. I applied it here as well. I have used CSS filters before to create sticky liquid effect. To achieve that, we first use blur filter and then we apply strong contrast, but these are not the only SVG filters that were made available with the release of CSS3. Today I will show you how to rapidly iterate between five distortion states using turbulence and displacement map SVG filters, and how to tweak the effect to create your own variations. For science, of course. If you click the like button, it's a massive help to make the video visible to more viewers via YouTube algorithm. Let's start coding. In index.html, I link style CSS file and create a basic markup. I want to keep our options open so we can apply the filter just to the text, just to the button's background or to everything. So I create five divs with a class of button underscore wrapper. Inside, I create HTML5 semantic tag button, which has some out of the box built-in functionality. It's targetable with um, tab key and it is compatible with all screen readers. Using it is a good accessibility practice. Next to it, I create a sibling element diff with a class of button label. I do this for all five button wrappers and I give them labels as we will be creating a menu for the hand-drawn art portfolio website. The labels can be, for example, home, about, artworks, contact and shop. In style CSS, I use asterisk selector star, which will apply to all elements on the page. And I set box size into border box. This means that any border and padding will be included in elements total width and height. Container will have width of 200 pixels and height 270 pixels. Position absolute, I'll give it temporary blue background, just so you can see what all these CSS values do with the element. Top uh, 50%, left 50%, transform translate minus 50%, minus 50%. This will center the element exactly in the middle of the page, both horizontally and vertically, and it will work only on elements with position set to absolute. It is centered now. I'm just not recording the entire window. You can see it's centered if you're coding along. Diff with a class of button wrapper will hold the button and button label elements and it will be set to position relative with 100% background blue so you can see where it is. Or red, actually. Margin bottom, 5 pixels to create some space in between buttons. Shared styles for both button and button label will be yellow background. Again, just temporary so you can see the elements. Position absolute will align it with its closest parent element that has positioning property declared. In this case, I put position relative on button wrapper. Width will be 100%. Height 100%. Hmm. 
and I forgot to give a height to button wrapper like this. Now both button and button label will inherit that value. Button label will have line height of 50 pixels to align the text vertically. This will only work if you have one line of text. For vertical alignment of multi-line text, you can use the absolute position centering trick we used on earlier lines 7 to 10. Text align center will align text horizontally. Font size 35 pixels and font family. Um, VS Code editor is giving me this nice font. The comma separated list in font family property means if the first one is not available on your computer, it will try the next one and so on. These are so-called fallback fonts. You can use any font you like. Font color will be white and background color will be black. Button element. Actually, let's put the background on it here. Button is a semantic HTML5 tag with some preset CSS styles. I'll reset it by setting its outline and border to none. In the HTML markup, you can see that button wrapper is the parent element and it contains two elements inside on the same level, so-called siblings, button and button label. With code structured like this, in CSS I can say when hover event occurs on button wrapper parent element, apply these styles to its child button element. Actually, let's scale the entire wrapper. Yes, I like that. Now I create two other hover events, one for button and a separate one for button label, so that we can apply styles to them independently. Let's just make the button white and font on the label black. To make it funky, we will apply CSS filter called Turbulence. I go back to index.html file and I will create inline SVG filter. SVG tag, devs tag, inside filter with ID attribute set to, let's say, shake zero, so that we can reference it with CSS later. Inside the filter wrapper, we will apply two filters, FE Turbulence and FE Displacement Map. FE Turbulence takes our website and basically converts it into a vector image using something called Perlin Turbulence function. I love Perlin noise effect. It is a type of gradient noise algorithm developed by Ken Perlin in 1983 to produce computer-generated imagery that doesn't appear blocky and has more natural appearing texture. There are so many effects we can do with Perlin noise using JavaScript and Canvas. I will show you later. Displacement map filter uses the pixel values from the image from into attribute to spatially displace the image from in. These filters are basically built in SVG algorithms. We will not go over it in detail here. That's beyond the scope of CSS tutorial. I will just show you the syntax, how to use it and where to tweak the values. Um, I go back to CSS and apply the filter to button wrapper element on hover, like this. Filter, URL, hashtag, and ID of the filter, shake zero. Now, when I hover over the buttons, I get this cool distorted effect. Now I want to make it squiggle and wiggle. I will create five copies of the same filter and I give each one different ID shake 0, shake 1, shake 2, and so on. Each needs to have a different number here in seat attribute, and let's give each one different scale value. You can experiment with the values here to make the effect more pronounced. We can also tweak the number in base frequency. If you replace 0.02 with, for example, 2, you will get very different result. In style CSS, I will create keyframes, which is so-called CSS at rule which controls individual steps in CSS animation sequence. It gives you more control than just using CSS transitions. As I said, Squiggle Vision animation technique rapidly animates between five similar images to create shaky outlines effect. In our keyframes, we will create five breakpoints, 0, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%, 
and we will assign a different filter to each step, targeting filters by IDs we gave them. On button wrapper, I use CSS animation property. I called our keyframes distort. It will be 0.5 seconds long, linear, which means evenly paced, and it will repeat itself infinitely. I made a typo. In keyframes, semicolon has to be here. Perfect. And I also want to add it to button wrapper when we don't hover over it like this. If I go back to index.html and change base frequency on our filter, look what happens. Uh, I change it to 0 0.03. Zero point zero four. Let's push it further. Zero point one. Zero point five. Zero point nine. I love SVG filters. <laughs> The other extreme might be a very small number, like 0 0.001. You get just this subtle minor glitch effect. Source code of the final result is in the video description down below. I have entire playlist of CSS experiments and vanilla JavaScript and Canvas animation series if you want something a bit more challenging. Thank you very much for watching. Click the like, please. Bye.